Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I'm going to show you how I made all of these Valentine DIYs using supplies from the Dollar Tree. So up first is this love sign. It's a wood sign from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just cutting the string off the top because I want this to be a shelf sign. And what I want to do is cover all the letters with this um, fabric that I made with sublimation in my last DIY video, the video that went up on Saturday. And so if you want to learn how I made this fabric, you can go back and watch that video. If you aren't set up for sublimation, you can totally make the same project um, using these designs that I designed on Canva. I will share the links below. And you can print them and Mod Podge them, which is exactly what I'm going to do with this fabric. But I kind of wanted mine to have some more texture and I wanted to make some custom fabric for Valentine's Day. So basically, I just drew on the back of the fabric, you know, where the letters would be, kind of filling in the missing parts because you're not going to get like a full sketch of the letters because they're all kind of together. But what I'm going to do is do L and V like below and then do O and E on top because they're all kind of like overlapping, if you know what I mean. So now I'm going to go in and cut out the O and the E out of this red fabric. So the white fabric um, has little red crabs all over it and little hearts. And then this one has little crabs and little shrimp all over it. And the crabs have little hearts on them as well. So of course, I wanna go with a beach ocean theme for Valentine's Day. And my theme today is red and white, or probably more red and ivory. And I had a lot of fun putting all these DIYs together. I really hope you enjoy them. So we've got three of our letters. So we just have to finish the E and just drawing that out. And again, you can totally do this project with paper if you aren't set up for sublimation. But I, I really like sharing my sublimation videos. It is a lot of fun. So just getting this last letter cut out and we're gonna be ready to Mod Podge our letters to the front of the sign. And I'm just gonna put a thin coat down. I'm gonna do the bottom, the L and the V first, and then I'll Mod Podge the O and the E on top. And I kinda have a funny story about this project. This is my second attempt at it because the first time I tried uh, the method I saw on TikTok or somewhere where people put the fabric on there, Mod Podged it on and tried to burn off the excess fabric. No, <laughs> it did not work. It made my white fabric on my letters black. <laughs> it was crazy. So just Mod Podging all that down. I thought what I saw that they had done that on fabric. Maybe they did it on with paper. I'm not sure. But just trying to fill in any gaps that I missed. And gluing that all down. Once I get it all on there, I'm just going to go over the whole thing with another coat of Mod Podge to make sure that it is good and sealed to the letters. And I really like covering these letters um, more than painting them because you don't really have to worry about the edges, which can be a lot of painting in there. But to finish it off, I thought it'd be fun to do some twine all around the edges. And so I'm just using some of this thicker twine. This is the kind um, that you can get in the big spool at Walmart and kind of burning it as I go to try to keep it clean. And uh, like you'll notice I only did part of the L so that the O could overlap and then I'm gonna do the same thing here on the V. I'm only doing the parts that aren't interfering with the other letters and just attaching that all with hot glue. And then I'm just gonna continue that same one and start working on my E and going all the way around and gluing the border. And I thought this gave it a nice little coastal touch and it made it feel like a more finished project. And I really like the fabric on them. I think the texture adds a lot to the project. 
And just finishing up with the O. I don't think I cut the O out like super straight, but it'll work good enough. And there we go. The only thing I wanted to add to this is it doesn't stand up really well. And so um, I'm just gonna take a couple of those little mini Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree and just glue a couple of those on the back just to make it a little bit more stable so that it will stand up on my shelves. I have a total of nine DIYs today. I filled up my entire cabinet. So this is how it turned out and this is how it looks on my shelf. I think it's super cute. What do you think? I really love the little ocean creatures on there. So fun. Okay, our next DIY. I wanted to make a really large sign and I found this sign at the Goodwill store for, I think I got it on sale for $1.50. It's basically a piece of plywood that somebody else had painted. So it's kind of real rough. And I wanna cover up all of the painting that's already on there. So I'm just mixing up some chalk paint. This is calcium carbonate that I get on Amazon mixed with a little bit of water and some acrylic paint. Um, I find this way cheaper than buying chalk paint and I will post a link to the recipe below. And I'm just gonna use one of these little rollers from the Dollar Tree. I love it when they have these. Because, you know, you get a brush in there too, and for a dollar you don't have to clean it up. You can just throw it away when you're done with it, right? So it takes several coats um, of the ivory paint to get that all covered where you can't see any of the writing showing through. And what I want to do is I want to make a really big um, hand-painted sign for this project. And I designed... Um, this on Cricut Design Space and I will post a link below to my design in case you want to recreate this sign. And I really like this font that I used here on the top row. It's called FB Love Hearts, I think. So it's got the little hearts in there. It's a little bit of extra weeding. But as you can see, what this is gonna say is sandy toes and salty kisses. I thought that was really cute. And I put a little crab and some lips on there as well. And I'm gonna use this paper transfer paper that I love, I get on Amazon. And I also get this stencil vinyl on there as well. I'll post the links to both of them below. They work great for hand painted signs. And I'm keeping this all together in one big piece. And I'm just gonna put this on my sign. Make sure your sign is dry before you um, put this on there. And I almost got it perfectly um, the right size. I do go in and just tape off a few edges just to make sure that I don't get any paint on them. And just peeling that paper off. And I love this transfer paper because it does not take off any paint. So just making sure that that is good and smoothed down. I'm not gonna coat it with Mod Podge or anything like that because I don't really care if there's a little bit of bleeding because it's gonna be rustic, coastal, and I am using um, just some red acrylic paint. I think this is called Candy Apple Red. Um, just something that I picked up at Target. Just something bright and red, and I'm using another one of those rollers from the Dollar Tree. And all I'm gonna do is go over the whole thing with one coat of that red, because I wanna make sure that, you know, I don't really have any bleeding or anything like that. And I kind of want like the white to show through, that way I'll, I'll have to distress it even less. So just making sure I got everything covered with that first coat. And then I'm gonna dry this and it is time to take off our stencil. I love making hand painted signs. It's my favorite thing about owning my Cricut for sure. So I'm just carefully pulling that off to reveal our design. And actually I had very, very little bleeding. It turned out really good. I think the roller helps with that for sure. So now I just have to go through and weed out all of the vinyl and all of that cute pattern on the top row there. 
And I saw this saying and I was like, oh, this is perfect. Sandy toes and salty kisses. It's right up my alley with my coastal Valentine's Day. And it's a nice big sign too. So it's going to fill in my whole top big shelf of my cabinet. Once I get it all off, I'm going to go over it with my sanding block, distress it even more to bring through some of that texture and some of the white paint below. And it gave it really nice coastal touch. Once I get it all done, I'm going to want this to be a standing sign as well. So I'm going to use some of this craft wood from the Dollar Tree. It's one of their thicker pieces. Um, just to make a little stand for the back. I'm just going to attach that with some Gorilla Glue hot glue. And that's going to make this a nice standing sign without a lot of effort. And that sticks really fast. And then the final touch, I thought it needed framed out some way. So I'm going to use some of this decorative nautical rope. Um, this is the nine foot, I think, brown rope from the Dollar Tree. It's not the real wide one. And I'm just going to glue that around all four edges to make a very simple coastal frame for our artwork. And I really like that texture and that color it brought in for the project as well. And it gives it more of a little beachy feel. And just getting that all glued down and this project is going to be complete. I really like how this turned out and I think it really goes great with all the other projects that we did today. And this is how it looks on my shelf. So fun. I love it. Okay, this was my inspiration for the whole thing. <laughs> I got this cute little planter at Dollar Tree. Look how cute he is. I was like, ooh, crabs are red. Crabs are red. That would be perfect for Valentine's Day, right? Now, he's a little shinier than I would like. And so I'm just going to fix that by going all over his little glazed surface with just some of that matte Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree just to make him not quite so shiny. Otherwise, he's perfect. And he's a pretty small little planter. So at first I was thinking maybe I would put a candle in it, but I do end up putting flowers in it. So I'm just gonna take a, a little piece of foam from the Dollar Tree and fill up the inside of him. And then we are going to use some of these little white flowers. They're the little foam roses from the Dollar Tree, and I thought those would be really cute because roses are great for Valentine's Day. And I want the middle part to be a little higher, and so I do glue another little tiny piece of foam there to the top just to kind of make it a little bit more dome-shaped when I put all these little roses in there. And I just start gluing them on. They don't have any kind of stem or anything like that. So I'm just attaching them to the foam with hot glue and kind of nicely stacking them in there to fill up the little crab with roses. Isn't it funny how one little thing like this, one little, I can make you have so many ideas. Like I had nine projects all stemmed from this little crab. <laughs> And that's all there is to it. Quick and easy for this little crab planter. And I will show you how he looks on my shelf. He's so cute. And there he is. I love him. <laughs> so fun. Okay, the next DIY is gonna be a heart. I got this heart at the Dollar Tree. It's not actually with the Valentine's Day decorations. It was with their like regular home decor section, but you could totally use one of the ones from the Valentine's Day section as well. And basically I'm just gonna work on the back. I just took the tags off and I'm gonna use that same candy apple red just on the front of our heart. I want to kind of make it two tones. So I'm leaving the sides of the heart white. And I'm not going to worry about the back. It can just kind of be a two-sided sign because you're not going to be able to see it. 
once I get a good coat on there, I do go over it with another coat because I wanted my red to be bright and I wanted to cover up the brown on the back of that sign. And what we're gonna do with this is decorate it with seashells. So these are those little teeny tiny seashells, easy for me to say, um, that you get at Dollar Tree in the little tiny jars. And so I like to dump them out just so I can kind of see what I'm working with. And I'm trying to find a bunch of ones that are white that are kind of similar. And I'm just trying to make the heart shape out of shells. So this is gonna be a really easy DIY, but it turned out really, really cute. I like it. So once I get all my shells picked out here, I am just going to attach them all with hot glue. And that little blue organizer I have there with my seashells in it, I got at the Dollar Tree. I have got so many good organizers from there lately. I've got all of my craft supplies so well organized. My husband is very pleased. <laughs> And so I'm just going around and gluing those all on there. My trick to gluing these on there is to kind of fill up the insides with hot glue where some of it's dripping out on the top part as I push it down. And cause it's kind of hard to glue these down because there's not a lot of surface touching the sign. And this project is about done. That's all there is to it. And I'm just gonna display this on um, some books that we're gonna make here in just a minute. And so I will show you how it looks here on my shelf. I think he's really sweet. And totally goes with a red and white ocean theme for this Valentine's Day. Okay, up next, I got two of these little wood uh, boxes, crates from the Dollar Tree. And we are going to make these into a kissing booth. So I'm just gonna attach them side to side with some Gorilla Glue hot glue. Luckily, they're exactly the same size, so they match up perfectly when I glue them together. But just to add a little bit more stability, I am gonna go grab a popsicle stick and cut the ends off of that so it's short enough and then I'm gonna hot glue that on the inside here just to give it a little bit more support. And I wanna make like a booth structure with this, with this being the bottom part and having a kissing booth a sign on the top. And to paint it, I am just going to use some ivory acrylic paint and this is so easy to paint, that raw wood from the Dollar Tree. It does take a couple of coats though, just because it is acrylic paint. And so I am gonna paint, um, this is gonna be like the top part, the shelf um, of the kissing booth where I'm gonna put all my kisses. And then I'm gonna paint the sides as well. I'm not gonna worry about any of the other parts cause you're not gonna be able to see them. So once I get that all painted, I do go over just the main part here with just a second coat, just to make sure that none of that wood is showing through. Then I'm using one of these craft wood pieces from the Dollar Tree. I love these things. And I'm just gonna cut it in half. I think it was 18 inches and I cut it in half to nine inch pieces. And once I cut it, with my saw, I am going to paint these ivory as well. And I'm just gonna worry about the front because that's basically all you're gonna be able to see. And I kind of measure that these would fit on my shelf because I don't want my kissing booth to be too tall because I need it to fit on a certain shelf of my display. So just attaching that with hot glue um, on the top, bottom, and this side, making sure that it is aligned up perfectly. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I kind of wanted these frames to be on the front of the booth. I thought that made more sense, but adding them on the back of the booth like this made it way more stable, and so it doesn't have any trouble standing up because I'm gonna attach a pretty big sign to those. 
And this is the sign from the Dollar Tree. It's this adorable little kissing booth sign and you can turn it from open to closed. They have these in red and pink at the Dollar Tree and I think they're so cute. Mine had a little trouble turning and so to fix that I just tied off some little twine on the bottom just to make a little bit of a spacer and now it turns really well. And just removing that tag on the back, we are going to attach that to the top of our kissing booth. It's the perfect color. I really don't have to do anything to it. I'm not gonna worry about the holes from the string. I don't think you're really gonna be able to tell that they're there. So I'm just kind of figuring out where I need to place my hot glue and hot gluing that to the top of those wood pieces. And we have this adorable little kissing booth. I'm going to line this up with some red kisses for Valentine's Day. But first we need to decorate it. So I wanted to go with my theme and I found these at the Dollar Tree. It's a crab and a lobster. I know that they are summer things, but my Dollar Trees kind of keep this stuff if it doesn't sell. And one of my Dollar Trees puts it like in the party section and one of my Dollar Trees like puts it just in the back of the store, like on an end stand. And so I can still find the summer stuff even in the winter, which is cool. So this was like a mobile or something like that, but I really wanted the lobster and the crab. It does have some weird holes in it though, um, as part of the mobile. So I am just um, filling those in with a little bit of spackling and overfilling those and drying those until they turn white and then I'm gonna sand off the excess. I'm trying to make that not so noticeable. So what I do is I go in with some white acrylic paint first and paint over that just to kind of match the color of the spackle. Just try to make that blend in a little bit more. And then I can't really see the outline anymore which is kind of necessary for the shape of the creatures, but I can see it through the paint enough where I can just go over it with a Sharpie and redraw that on there. Because when I go to paint these red, then you'll be able to see uh, the black Sharpie through that and you can still see the structure of the crab and the lobster. Since it's not like a perfect cut out of them, I thought it really needed um, this outline. So I'm just redrawing those on there. And then I am gonna go over both of these with that same candy apple red acrylic paint with my roller. And basically that is all there is to those guys. And I'm gonna use those as decorations for the front of our kissing booth. So it goes along with our red and white ocean theme. And I'm just gonna attach those to the front with hot glue, one for each one of those little crates. I'm just gonna kind of put them on there like on an angle just to add, make it a little bit more interesting. And we're gonna add the lobster here as well. And I had a lot of fun putting this kissing booth together. I always love making these kind of things, lemonade stands, all those kind of things. So fun. Then I thought it needed some hearts for Valentine's Day. So I'm gonna use some of these wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree in red and the natural color and kind of fill up any empty space there I have on the front and bring in a fun touch of Valentine's Day. And I really like these hearts. They're like colored on both sides, which is really nice. And then I'm also going to um, put a few hearts up here, a few of the natural colored hearts. And that's it. We have our little ocean kissing booth. And it's so much fun. I really like it. It's so cute. Good job, Dollar Tree, with that sign. I really like it. And this is how it looks on my shelf, filled with Valentine's Day kisses. I am sure I'm going to have to refill that shelf a lot. <laughs> okay, our next DIY is going to be some stacked books. I always love this DIY, but they have these great stacked books at the Dollar Tree now. I didn't even have to make them. And they're really cute and they're Valentine's already, but they don't really match my theme or my colors. And so I'm gonna paint them. Now, I've always made stack books out of the wood crates from 
Um, Dollar Tree, I never had any problems, but this is like covered in like, I don't know, some kind of cardboard. And so I'm painting them with that ivory acrylic paint, which you would think would not be a big deal, but you'll see it is a big deal. Don't paint these with acrylic paint. Don't do it. Use chalk paint. Trust me. You'll see here in just a minute. Because here I am taping off my top and bottom book because I want them to stay white. And I'm going to go in and paint my middle book red with that same red acrylic paint. And this was dry, y'all. So you'll see what happens. <laughs> Please learn from my lesson. When I pulled off the painter's tape, which was really good painter's tape, look what happened. It took off all of my paint. I was so upset. So I'm like, okay, this has to have chalk paint. So I went ahead and mixed some chalk paint and hand painted the top and bottom on there. And then I'm just using a brown marker to kind of um, draw in the little creases in between the books. And that's so much better. Now, I want to put names on my books. I probably should have used my Cricut, but the only kind of red Cricut vinyl I have is the Dollar Tree vinyl. It, it's so hard to work with. That I was like, yeah, I'll just draw it on there. So I'm just using a red Sharpie from the Dollar Tree. And I am going to put my words on the white books in the red. It's going to give me a nice skinny font. Um, kind of like a Ray Dunn font. And I'm just trying the best I can to get that on there. The marker didn't really want to cooperate. But what I'm going to have the book spell out is love as deep as the ocean. I thought that would be really cute with our theme. And then I do deep as just with a white chalk um, pen. It's kind of the only thing I had that was kind of with a fine tip. And I made it work. Then um, to strap the books together, I'm just going to use some of this red and white gingham ribbon from the Dollar Tree and then to decorate I'm going to use one of these little laser cut um, ocean creatures from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to do the octopus one just kind of on the front like that. I think that will look really cute and so I'm just going to hot glue that red and white gingham ribbon on there and that's not very Valentine's Day but it definitely goes with my red and white theme so I guess it is. And then I'm just going to hot glue that little octopus to the front, just leaving it brown because I think it's so cute. And only one of my Dollar Trees carries those laser cut creatures like that, but they're adorable. I love them. And this is how our books turned out. And this is how it looks on my shelves. It turned out cute after all of that chaos. <laughs> And then I want to top the sides and the top of my shelves with like a garland. So I thought these little grapevine hearts from the Dollar Tree would be perfect to make a little garland. And there's five in a package. And then you'll also see those wood beads with the hearts that say hugs and XOXO. Those are from the Dollar Tree as well. And basically, I'm just going to tie two of those together, and that's going to decorate one side of my cabinet. That's an easy DIY, right? Now I'm going to cut some of that twine from Walmart, and then I'm going to cut out little pieces of twine and tie up all of my little grapevine hearts just over on one side like that. That way I can tie that twine to my main piece of twine so I can move them back and forth and adjust the hearts where they're going to need to be. So I'm just going to start tying those on, just double knotting them and cutting off the excess twine. And it's just kind of a really natural, simple garland for the top of my display. Not a lot of color. I did think about painting these hearts, but I kind of decided just to leave them as they are. And so my plan, like, once I got it all in there, I was like, I need a little bit of decoration on the top, but I also need a little bit of decoration on both sides. So this is going to go along the top like that. And then I did the little wood beads that I tied together just along the other side. And those are adorable. And I didn't have to do anything but tie those together. So there's an easy DIY for you. 
And then our last DIY. I got this wood buoy at the Goodwill store and I thought it would be a perfect DIY and great with this ocean coastal theme we got going on today. And I'm just gonna clean it up and repaint it and decorate it for Valentine's Day. Now, if you're not as lucky to find a buoy like this, I do have a DIY video where I show you how to make these with the craft foam from the Dollar Tree. I made them for the 4th of July. I'll try to find that video link and post it below so you're not out of luck. They were actually pretty easy to make. And I am gonna go over the whole top part here with just that red acrylic. After taping off where the seam is gonna be, I'm gonna do kind of the same two color um, blocking on there as it was painted before, but I'm gonna do it with red and ivory. I'm also going to number the buoy. You know how like um, a lot of times buoys will have numbers on them. So I thought it'd be a really fun way to bring in a, a Valentine's Day's date, 214. And so I'm gonna do the 1-4 in that same color red, just using one of those little makeup sponges from the Dollar Tree to simply paint those. And then I'm gonna go over and do a second coat on that red to make that really nice and red pop on the top of our buoy. And then I'm gonna paint the two in the ivory because that is the color that I'm gonna do on the bottom. And I want the numbers to kind of be contrasting. You'll see in a minute when I get it all put together. So funny when I get it all on there and I showed my son and asked him what he thought. He was like, well, what are those numbers? Is that our address? And I'm like, no. He's like, is that an anniversary? I'm like, no. And then he was like, is that Valentine's Day? <laughs> so funny, it cracked me up. He's a hoot. Okay, so I just taped it um, off and am painting uh, the bottom part with that ivory acrylic paint. I do have to use a couple of coats to get good coverage. And this buoy from the Goodwill looks way better. It kind of reminded me right now of a Pokeball. You can tell I've probably made a lot of Pokemon crafts in my day, so I know that. So I'm just pulling off my tape. And we have our freshly painted wood buoy, and I'm so glad I picked this up at Goodwill. I think it turned out really fun, and it's a great size. So this is my plan. I'm just going to attach the two to the top and the one four on the bottom. It's gonna give a fun nautical theme and spell out the Valentine's Day date. So I'm just going to attach those to our buoy with a little bit of hot glue. And then I thought it needed um, another little final touch. So once I do get those on there, I also decide to go in and decorate the top um, with a little heart. I'm just gonna use um, some twine from the Walmart, from that Walmart spool, and just tie off a new hanger for the top that's gonna match more with our other DIYs. And I'm just gonna do that natural heart just to bring another little touch of Valentine's Day into that DIY. And this is how it looks on my shelves. And I hope you guys enjoyed these DIYs today. If you did, don't forget to like, comment below your favorite project, and don't forget to subscribe. Here we go, final reveal time. Thanks for watching. What you do
What you do 